to a really solid ACC matchup. Number 10 and number 11 in the country. Duke on Senior Day taking on Boston College from Kiskinen Stadium in Durham, North Carolina with Cat Whitehill, Mike Watts. Here's the Boston College starting lineup. And no need to make many changes here, Kat. Yeah, and they will be in that 4-3-3 with Sam Coffey really trying to connect well with those three up tops. But the key for them today is going to be Jillian J Jennings. She's going to have to drop back a little bit, help her defense, because she has to deal with a tough up three front from Duke, especially with Kayla McCoy. So keep an eye on her and helping that defense and getting in those good passing lanes. And for Duke, Bodie moves in in the upper left corner there. Nabat will start off the bench. And they'll start in a 4-3-3 as well. But the key for them is going to be Ella Stevens. She needs to create for this team. She needs to force Coffey to, to drop back even deeper to help defend her. But her and McCoy up top, if they can connect today, they could do really well in beating that Boston College tough defense. So players meeting in huddles here for Duke, number 10 in the country. They come off of a 2-1 win against Louisville. And we're hoping that Duke is able to take care of some business today against Boston College. As Allison Foley leads the group, her 23rd season entered the year with 267 wins. Now sits at 280. Took over a program that hadn't been to the NCAA tournament in over a decade. And they do come off a year in which they missed the NCAA tournament. Robbie Church led Duke to the College Cup last year. Cal, when we talked about Duke and, and what they brought to the table this year, Robbie Church said we really didn't know what we were going to get. And if you said we're going to be in second place right now, well, they would take that. Players like Rassiope have played a major role. Incredible goal she scored against Clemson a couple weeks ago. Part of this offense that's found their way without some key pieces from last year. And I've watched and rewatched and four or five times on this because this is just a tremendous goal and that bend just completely beats the goalkeeper. Nothing she can do and you can see the celebration. She knew that she hit that perfectly and she got on the top 10 and I asked Robbie Church, I was like, how did she react? And she, he, she, he just said that she just came to practice as if it was another day. And I'm like, well, you gotta just keep watching that YouTube video all the time though. <laughs> That's a fun shot to make right there. I wouldn't know. I'm not, I mean, you should know. It's one of the best feelings when you hit the ball that perfectly. And I'm glad that she got on the top 10 because she deserved it. Well, Alexis Bryant's hoping it won't be at her expense. What an incredible red shirt senior year the Kensington, Maryland native has had 13 shutouts in her first three seasons in goal. Wasn't even guaranteed to be the starter and yet has come in, led nine team shutouts, eight on her resume this year. On the other side, Brooke Heinsen. And if you're watching in Boston, yes, it is of that Heinsen family of Celtics lore. Brooke playing for Duke. Eight shutouts this year replaced EJ Proctor, who had an incredible run last year all the way to the College Cup. We're underway at Koskinen Stadium in Durham, North Carolina. It's Duke and Boston College, number 10 and number 11, and teams number two and four entering the day in the ACC standings. Duke in white and blue, a team that feels like their possession is really coming around of late, something they've improved on as the year has gone along. Well, and the key right now is the last two games, they have given up early goals. And a lot of that had to do with the high pressure from teams like Louisville and Clemson. And we talked to Allison Foley of Boston College, and I asked her if she would do the same thing. And she said, we're very tempted to do that. It was successful against Florida State earlier in the season. And they've seen that Duke has struggled against it. But right now, you're not seeing it. They're just going to pick and choose when those moments will happen. And a lot of that is dependent on whether Coffee in that midfield tells her team to go for it. Burns tries the right-hand side. And it's turned over in midfield. Right back to McDonald. It's upfield by Varela. Rassiopi. And there's Ella Stevens. Pulled away. All the way up. Simmons. Let's take a look at Cat's keys for the game. Well, the first one we're going to look at is going to be Duke. It's going to be team defending, something they've really struggled with this year, something they've worked very hard on. 
They want to make sure that starting from the front to the back, they are one unit in defense. But it, winning this possession battle, they pride themselves on how good they are in possession. But if Boston College can disrupt them with that high pressure, it will be difficult for them. So far, Duke has had complete control of this game. Back to Heinsohn. And there's Burns, 90th career appearance for the Duke Blue Devils. Senior out of Jacksonville, one of the four honor pregame, along with the McCoy, McDonald, Brassiope. Taylor Mitchell. And it's interesting to see Burns more in the central role. She's been playing out outside left a little bit, but with her being a, an experienced player, they wanted to start early, so they, they put her back into that center role, and we'll see how comfortable she is with Mitchell sitting in the middle with her. Duke able to break that first line of pressure. Gets by McDonald, and Vaughn trying to slide in for Boston College. Field by Rassiope, and here's Kayla McCoy, seven goals in ACC play. And streaking ahead, thought the overlap was there from Bodie. Runs out. Cats and BC Keys. Well, they need to win the individual battles. They prided themselves on that this year, but this is a Duke team that is playing extremely well right now, and the first individual battle they have to win is against Kayla McCoy up there, and she had a free run, and she just gave the ball away. And they also need to high pressure. That will disrupt Duke in possession, and they, we haven't really seen much of that quite yet, but I would suspect that as the game goes on, they're gonna get a sense that they need to press up high and force Duke to beat them out wide and force some easy giveaways because they're very good in transition. Mitchell's ball upfield. Taken by Duke. And that high pressure from Boston College, you can see right now how comfortable Duke is with this time and this space. They love the ball at their feet. They love connecting, especially down the middle of the field. Boston College is trying to clog the middle, force Duke out wide, but Duke is just playing right through them. Bouncing ball that Bodie able to bring down, shoved aside by Varela. Tough, gritty, athletic player and outside back. Mike sliding to keep it away from Simmons. And really the story of the game for Louisville against Duke, they take that early lead and then they sort of sat back and suddenly Duke got a little bit of possession and they felt more comfortable and the game sort of slipped away from there. Well, that's where they get their confidence is, is holding on to the ball, winning that possession battle, just being patient in their attack and their growth. That You'll see a few long balls because their center backs do have that range, but you're not going to see it often, especially if that pressure isn't there. And if Boston College can force them to do a few more long balls, then they can win that first and second ball and, and regain possession quicker. Because right now it's been all about Duke and, and, and holding on to the ball, and Boston College is really just on their back foot at the moment. Mitchell goes back to Burns. Step came from Vaughn. Mitchell able to play ahead. Only does break down out wide for Duke. BC takes over. BC last year, 10 wins, nine losses, and a draw. Fell to Duke in the ACC tournament but had 16 freshmen and sophomores on that roster. Group that went four, five, and one in the ACC. They feel like they've taken a, a giant step. The record would certainly bear that out in 2018. Well, this has been extraordinarily patient from Duke at the outset. And this is fine for Boston College. They're fine with the center backs having the most touches so far in this game. But the problem is when Duke does find their players in the midfield, Boston College hasn't gotten enough pressure on them. They need to get more compact in the midfield, have their defense push up a little bit more, and put the pressure on those players and force them into easy turnovers. Quick throw from Bike and Vaughn. 
Off the spin, Mitchell controls that as far as Kayla Jennings, part of the Jennings sister duo in holding midfield. And a foul about 10 yards outside penalty area. Sam Coffey goes down, and she is the ultimate specialist on set pieces, one of the best in the ACC. And much better here, and Coffey is just so good on the ball. And an absolute foul there, but you need to pressure her quickly because if she's on the ball, not only is she excellent at scoring goals, and she has 10 on the season, but she also has 11 assists. And when you have that kind of balance in your attack, she sets other players up, and that's why Boston College has been so good this season. And if you're Brooke Heinsohn, I don't know that she has any idea where this is going. It, it could obviously be a shooting opportunity, but she's... Uh, Able to assist as well, and it is chipped over the back line. The second ball goes across the byline. Sam Coffey brings a lot of versatility to an offense. Kayla Jennings was the target. BC and Duke, longtime rivals in ACC going back to 05, 18th meeting. Blue Devils leading 10 wins so far, including that crucial ACC tournament game last year. Foul, Duke actually looked like they'd run with this. They won't in the end. I like how you say it's a longtime rival. Boston College wasn't in the ACC when I was here, so that just shows you. Relative. How old, I'm, I'm, I'm old, how old I am now. To me, it's a longtime rivalry. There you go. Ella Stevens. First header away. Down by Bodie. Stevens again, fourth in Duke history, 26 assists. Simmons, this is Bodie. Crossing, aiming at the back post. Kayla Jennings upfield. Sam Coffey charges onto this and plays an early ball long for Vaughn. Vaughn will spin and out the open now. Vaughn, excellent goal, incredible goal. Duke's early struggles continue. BC on the board. Transition, transition, transition for Duke. One pass from Coffey. Add another assist to her on the season, but well played there from Olivia Vaughn to deal with the ball. An excellent strike that breaks, beats Heinz in near post. I thought Mitchell was going to get there. She made such an incredible recovery run. She's so fast, but Olivia Vaughn with a strike that just went right past Heinsohn on that play, and what a start for Boston College. For Duke, it's Groundhog Day all over again. Three straight games conceding in the opening 10 or so minutes. And McCoy goes down, hit by Mitchell from behind, and a free kick to Duke. And that goal really came against the run of play for Boston College. They were dropping. They decided not to high press. And well done for them on the transition, winning that initial cross and then just getting it up the field quickly. Nine assists this year for Ella Stevens. Stevens clipping this to the pack post. Somehow went all the way through. Mitchell recovers and chipped out of play. Well, if you're Robbie Church, you've been down this road before and you've still found a way to win. I don't know that you're you're fretting at this point, but it's a, a troubling trend for sure. Not fretting, but frustrated. You know, you talk about it. He talked about it with us. You know he talked about it with his team pretty consistently all week. And it's all about your mentality at that point. In the first five to ten minutes, you want to get into the game. They were doing so well in their possession, but you can't have any mental lapses, and that's exactly what happened to them. Ball slipped ahead. Mitchell right onto the foot of McCoy. Short side shot. Knocked aside by Bryant. McDonald heading it forward. McCoy nearby. Bryant will grab it. And to your point earlier, you did say teams can sit in almost, and then you really have to struggle to get through them. Mitchell, not a great clearance. Yeah, and it's an, a, an excellent opportunity for McCoy, but I love how strong Bryant is on those wrists. And she's coming off of her line quickly, reading the game so well. 
and how much better she's gotten from last season to this season has just been tremendous to watch. Vaughn, that got deflected, Bike. Corner coming for BC. Duke's head coach telling us during the week that you give up an early goal, a team sits in on you and your season can end. Not gonna be the case today. Duke is close to locking in a top four seed chance to host a quarterfinal. BC with a win today would put themselves in excellent position for it. BC looking for another, but the service, nothing to write home about. And yeah, for a player like Coffee, that's just very disappointing. She knows that's not good enough. You have to give your team an opportunity to at least get it on frame or get another corner kick. Here's Mitchell pre-med at Duke. Really quiet center back. And that's something she's going to have to grow into. As a center back, you can't be quiet. You see the game of, better than any field player out there. The goalkeeper is the only one that sees it better than you. And not only do you have to direct the players right next to you and in front of you, but you also have to, you know, help out your forwards and, and kind of whip them into shape a little bit, help them to get some pressure just to make sure that you're not having as, as much defending to do. So. She, She's young, she'll, she'll get to it, but uh, it's something she needs to, to evolve into as a center back. Still only a sophomore. Bodie streaking onto the play on the right-hand side. Delaney knocking it across, and a touch from Rassiopi. And Graham, excellent service. Rassiopi nearly a toe poke into the net. Well, my favorite part of this play was the ball from Bodie, perfectly done. And Graham with an excellent cross in, but Rassiopi was called offside. But that play is so dangerous, that quick change of point to get that ball out wide and just miss from Rassiopi. It looked like the referee would have called her off anyway. Caroms down to McDonald. And Duke will load up again. Bodie. That defense by Mitchell and Busy. We have two Jennings in this game. They are related. And two Mitchells in this game playing center back on opposite ends of the field, unrelated. Well, I think it's funny that the younger Jennings, Jillian, is actually more of a mom than the older Jennings <laughs> and Kayla. Even though they play together, they kind of tell, say, they say that Jillian's kind of the mom of the team, take, make sure that everything's in order and takes care of everyone. There's Kayla, and we were told that. You know, Jillian comes in, takes care of the team, takes care of Kayla. McCoy, Rassiopi. Stripped of the ball. Coffee trying to hold on. It's with BC. Jillian, a sophomore out of Montclair, New Jersey, initially committed to play with her sister at Maryland. But when Kayla transferred, Jillian came along. Her mother, a, a well-respected high school lacrosse coach. Well, it's nice when you have two players. They both kind of sit deep in that more defensive role. It allows Coffee to go forward a little bit more. They connect extremely well together in there. Vaughn was played through. Won't get a corner out of this. Untouched on the way out. Our week seven Monday night football matchup, Saquon Barkley, Odell Beckham Jr. and the Giants in Atlanta to take on Julio Jones, Matt Ryan, and the Falcons. 815 Eastern and 515 Pacific on ESPN and also simulcast in Spanish on ESPN2 and available on the ESPN app so you can watch anywhere. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6, Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. Yep. 
first touch by Vaughn. Comes out to Stevens, and Duke can control again, conceding in the 10th minute. Largely, I think we'd both agree against the run of play. Duke's had the vast majority of possession early. Matchup of two and four in the ACC standings. Two matches to play. Rassiopi trying to slip through McCoy. With some support coming up from behind. Cat McDonald, senior out of Raleigh. And that's where Duke should look for their success at the moment. Find those plate pockets out wide, look for Bodie, look for Rassiopi, and even some outside backs running forward because that's the space that Boston College is giving them. Force Boston College to then come out a little bit. Then you can get Ellis Stevens more on the ball and Cat McDonald through the midfield. They just haven't touched the ball nearly enough in this first half. Rella dumps this into the Duke half. It was interesting. I could hear Allison Foley, coach of BC, in that moment, she's screaming at Sam Coffey to get on number 16. They don't want those players like Sidney Simmons touching the ball. They know how important they are in building up this attack. So they're really forcing them out wide. They've had success. They should try it, and then that will create that space that I was talking about once the defenders have to go wider than they would prefer at the moment. All well, the pressure of BC beginning to hit home a little bit more. Duke trying to play out of these real tight spaces. Something they take a lot of pride in. McDonald, and now they're breaking free. Ella Stevens, excellent move around Varela, setting up Bodie, who fires it across him. Oh, Bryant, it's easy work of that. That's a good idea from Bodie. She meant to curve it, but it went straight to, to Bryant's hands. But that's a, a nice early look at an early ball. She just has to execute it better. Last year, about 100 minutes. This year, over 1,000. Bodie's become a real important piece, having started now nine of 17 games for Duke. And she earned the starting role because of how well she played against Louisville in the last game. And she was a real spark for Duke and really helped them get that comeback win. That's really the only question right now, seemingly, in this Duke lineup. Bodie or Nabet. Into the right-hand channel and overrunning Jenna Bike. ESPN basketball, a love story. Unprecedented 20-hour film consisting of more than 60 interconnected short stories. Continues Tuesday. Episodes 5 and 6 start at 7 p.m. Eastern. All episodes also streaming live on the ESPN app. So when's soccer a love story coming? <laughs> Hopefully soon. Yeah. I mean, the 99ers, 30 for 30 was awesome nonetheless. I mean, I'm not saying that, that it's not been done. I just think there's compelling hours worth of, of footage that could be compiled here. Well, I mean, I absolutely agree, but <laughs> there's a little bias, I guess. Preaching to the <laughs> choir. Stevens, a horizontal run gets dumped by Mitchell. And she released it, and wins a foul for Duke. Well played down this sideline from Duke. Just making the, de the defenders of Boston College just, just look real, not at their best because of how that movement off the ball and the crisp passing. Pascal floats this over everybody. Mikey Rusima to take the throw in front of a nice senior day crowd. 
home get football up, game yesterday against UVA. And uh, Tuesday, exhibition game for uh, Mike Krzyzewski's group. And then Duke North Carolina men's soccer here at Koskinen Stadium next door. Game that will air on ESPNU. Fun times around these parts. McCoy trying to take advantage of a mistake. Flag goes up here. There's Bodie. McCoy, Bodie played through, and Bodie trying to step by, swept off her foot. Kayla Duran, a shocking number to play center back. Number 10 getting back to make the play. Well, and good reaction here. Bodie should have gone more in line. Instead, she decided to go towards goal, and Duran read it well and was able to get the clearance. That was a dangerous play there from Duke. Duran was the Massachusetts Player of the Year at Buckingham, Brown, and Nichols. Largely playing forward then, played all three lines. Only freshman starter for BC is Bryant. Controls and, you know, Cap, BC missing the NCAA tournament last year. Seemingly a lock now. I think the question is, do they host? Are they seeded? And that'll sort of flesh itself out in the next two, two and a half weeks through the ACC tournament. But you think about the ACC on the whole, and it seems as competitive as it's ever been. North Carolina has a chance to clinch the number one seed in the tournament today, but everything else, it, it's, it's uh, a lot of parity there. Yeah, and we talked to Robbie Church about that, the coach of Duke, and he said there's a good chance that 11 teams could be talked about from, from the NCAA committee just because of how well they've done in their non-conference schedule. They may not have a winning percentage in the ACC, but that's a tough one to do anyways. But they're, they have, uh, most of them are above 500, top teams and top to bottom. Stevens sending it ahead. Bryant Brave off her line. Delaney Graham got the worst of that, it seems. This is a very tough tackle here. Well off her line is Bryant, and Graham goes all in, and look at that awkward fall. That's why she's still on the ground. The ball in from Stevens was a nice one, just missing on Graham, but look at that, how difficult that fall was. Trying to get to that ball before Bryant. It's good to see Graham back up and running back to her spot. By the way, the beep test is universal, right? Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. 51, how good is that when she set the standard for that? <laughs> well, it's different. There's different beep tests. Oh, so, so it's not yeah. like universal. It's not like well, it's, a, a it's standard. The same. It's a beep test, yeah, but it's a, it's different beep tests, and mine is, were different numbers. So, uh. Uh, But anytime you can set a standard in a beep test, it's impressive because that was never my strength. <laughs> down by Jenna Bike. Bike able to get around. Coaches. Trying to line this up toward the back post. Floated over the bar and out. BC getting ready to make their first couple of changes in a moment. It's a good effort from Bike there to, to win the initial touch, but then she's got to do better on that cross. Turn those hips just a little bit more and give your teammates an opportunity to get a to get a shot off. Third BC shot. Duke's got four so far. A couple of saves from Bryant for Boston College. And one goal against the run of play. Ten minutes in. Olivia Vaughn set up by Coffee. Flag is up here. Coach Allison Foley, 23rd year leading BC, joins us from the field. Coach, uh, another hot start another for you guys coming off of that uh, shutout loss 
against North Carolina had to feel good to get on the board that way. Yeah, it was great. Always good to get on the board first, for sure. We talked to you earlier and said you might do a high pressure on, on Duke, but it seems like you're just dropping a little bit more. Is, is there a different game plan now with the yeah. pressure? Yeah, 17's, 17's floating up on our back line, so so out of the out of the midfield, so we don't want to play four across. So we're just tucking in a little bit more, um, just so we can play three v three in the midfield. We're not outnumbered out there. To what extent are you comfortable allowing Duke to control with that back four within 18, 20 yards of, of their own end line? Yeah, no problem. I mean, they can have the ball inside their 18. We we got no problem with that. Coach, thanks for your time. Hey, okay, thank you. Allison Foley has done incredible work this year. I mean. There's talent on this team for sure. It, it, it's Sam Coffey played a big role too, but last year took a lot of lumps and they're paying off in spades right now with the ACC down to its final two games and they're sitting in a top four position. Well, they tend to do well in their non-conference play. They play tough opponents, but then when they hit ACC, a lot of times that's where they fall and that's where they struggled a lot last year. But this year to, to be in the top four, possibly hosting the the ACC tournament in the first game that was it that didn't start out as one of their goals but as they saw progress the season and they beat Florida State so soundly earlier they were like well let's now let's make that one of our goals and now we want to be seated for the NCAA tournament that's just how good they have grown into the season BC is a, a foul committed here oh, by the Eagles. Eagles came in with a exhibition match against Penn State, and they weren't sure if that was a fluke or not. They beat the Nittany Lions 4-1 in preseason, and then that Florida State game was sort of when they realized, okay, this is real. We can go outplay a team with that kind of, of national expectation like the Seminoles. When it's true, Florida State has always been a, a tough team in the ACC. They're typically either regular season champs, conference champs, or close to the top, and they started out the season so well against them, and that's when they really, really believed that this team was one to really be reckoned with. So keep your eye on Boston College going through the NCAA tournament. Coy took a spill. I think still arguing the point a bit. Great use of the body from the center back. I saw that. So I, Mitchell? Yeah, I had no foul on that one. Well, pressure coming. Bryant clears away with two Blue Devils in pursuit. No comment about Mark Gorak sidestepping that ball. I mean, that was impressive, too. Center backs. They, they give all the credit to themselves and none to the referee. Referee called into play here again. Suma moves down. Yeah, and this is a tough tackle in from... Rassiopi, it's her back leg that actually gets Rusima here and almost scissored at the very end and that just is one of those tackles that is a tough one and it's good to see her walking it off right now. Gonna hold up play. Duke's on it here. Team starting two freshmen playing four in total of a five player freshman class. Four senior starters on senior day. Typically run about three off the bench. Group that graduated Rebecca Quinn and Skylar Debris and Imani Dorsey on the NWSL Rookie of the Year and Ashton Miller and what an incredible College Cup team put together last year. Bodie, Bodie sort of held up a bit. Mitchell went in, peel for handball, there it is. This will go against Alyssa Varela. Well, one way that a team can grow up when you do lose so many seniors is Bodie is going against, and it's an obvious handball there, good call from the referee, but when you go down goals early, that's when you grow up quickly. And that's one team, thing this Duke team has learned is to come back. Stevens floating that long. First header, Burns. Oh, 
I'm sure there were times when you were at North Carolina where so many seniors left, so many big names left that, that there's that question in the back of your mind, okay, how do we replace that? And well, Duke's found a way to do that this year, and, and obviously when you were there, UNC figured it out too. We did all right. <laughs> Duke making a change here with Mackenzie Pluck coming in. I understand that in this part of North Carolina, you're trying to be modest. If I catch you a <laughs> handful of miles away, I'm not sure that you would feel the same way. Well, I just know that, you know, when you have a, a Tar Heel in the booth doing a, a, a Duke game, there's going to be something said. So I'm trying to be as, <laughs> as nice as possible here. <laughs> I do have a lot of really good memories at this stadium, though. I will say that. I mean, that's that's not that's not kind to say. I mean, that just means Duke fans went home depressed. <laughs> Jenna, Jenna, take a look. They did. Why did you drop your mic like that? You just you you dropped the mic after that. It's a throw for BC. I'm looking forward to so much of this on the ACC Network next year. I am so amped up for this. Me too. Well, one thing I am amped up about is how good this soccer is because this has been a, an excellent display so far of ACC soccer and two of the top teams just really battling it out. So it's it's been a it's been really fun to watch in this first half. Simmons. So Mitchell dribbles by the first line. Sima came up from her left back position to stymie Duke's offensive flow. Speaking of the ACC network, 15 schools all on one network, a new place to call home. The ACC network coming August 2019. The Blue Devil Network working with us today. A wonderful uh, team, Amy, Matt, Todd, Jim, and uh, the folks here at Duke, incredibly welcoming. Um, what's just a, a perfect day for the game. Well, I will say it is a nice warm booth for us because it is a bit chilly. It's a perfect day to play soccer, but I'm glad that we're in a nice indoor facility here. 53 degrees outside, the sun might help a little bit. Up in Boston, it's about 45 with the wind about 25 miles an hour. Good slip ball ahead, Pluck. Pluck, a response for Duke, yes! 1-1. One, one. It's her fourth of the year. And what a way for McKenzie Pluck, number 24, to come in off the bench. Hasn't had a lot of touches, but Kayla McCoy finds her open on that left side and beats Bryant near post. And you can see the frustration from Bryant. She knows she needs to do better. You never want to have that as a goalkeeper. Just puts it underneath and gets the game-tying goal for Duke. But it well done from Pluck to take the right touch, put it in a place where it makes it easy for her to use that left foot and just slip it right under Bryant's hands. Freshman with four goals out of North Wales and Pennsylvania. Over 80 goals in her four-year career. Germantown Academy. Played for the Sky Blue Player Development Academy, too. In that area. And it's uh, well all tied up. You talk about a great example of ACC soccer. And Duke coming up with a response to BC's 10th minute goal. Chloe charging through a couple of players in midfield. Another one this soon. Come off that attack. What a turn by Pluck. Working in from the left-hand side. Puck scored two minutes and 15 seconds after coming off the bench. Well, she's already really causing a lot of problems out on that left side. 
Boston College is stepping a little bit too quickly on her, and she's easily getting by. Just missed a cross on that last effort, but they need to keep an eye on her because she's making the right runs and timing them well. Stepped right in there, Pluck did. Turned over to Pluck. Arm extended. Coy wanted it at her feet. Recovered by McDonald. Bodie has been a bit more central since Pluck came on. Bodie will strike! Just missed it. Tried to go for the upper corner. And it's been the pressure now from Duke that is forcing easy turnovers from Boston College. And what an excellent effort there from Bodie, trying to bend it in near post. Just misses to get a second goal for Duke. But right now, Boston College is really struggling to get it out of their back. Maybe they should relieve some pressure and look over the top, find Vaughn, get Coffee the ball a lot more. She hasn't touched it nearly enough in this first half. Mary Kate McGuire checking in. Kayla McCoy. McGuire hailing from Rhode Island. This Duke roster pretty well spread out. Players from all over the country. Delaney Graham, inching up from right back. Varela able to keep that away at first. Good touch by Stevens. From Reuters, DC to slow that progression. And a very good adjustment here from Duke. McDonald is really starting to, to hang a little bit lower. Her and Simmons both have really kept an eye on Coffee, not allowing for her to get any kind of easy touch. Because when she did get that long ball, that's how they scored, and they've been pressuring her. Pluck curling this in behind the back line, and Bryant got there first because McGuire and Pluck were on the same page. Really impressive freshman duo. I'm not really sure if Bryant saw McGuire coming in at the last second because she was very nonchalant and, and scooping that up and she had just barely missed that. McGuire was free to run straight at her goal. Bodie, if you're Boston College, this is maybe the first time Duke has possessed the ball this far up the field with their defenders. Typically, they've been a little further back. Ball aimed at Pluck. Pluck will get a header on this. Playing ahead toward McGuire. If you're BC, how do you turn the tide? Maybe it's against the run of play altogether. Well, that's how they did it in their, their goal early on. And it's, it was with a play just like that where Coffee had time and space to look up, find that long ball. She just made the wrong decision there because Vaughn was on the right side making a nice run. And if the two, two of them had connected, it could have been a 2v2 in the back. Had a pluck and back sets it to the touchline. Change coming up front. Carly Leipzig checking in. Placing Olivia Vaughn, the goal scorer, back in the 10th minute. Lockhead, maybe the fastest player on the team, matched up against Delaney Graham. Player with the most endurance for Duke. Left hand BC offensive end. Dot 
Donald. Rella. The head of Simmons. Now Bodie. I like the adjustment, Bodie moving into the middle of the field a little more. Yeah, she's been on the right side, moved into the middle. She's just kind of been all over the field for, for Duke and done a nice job getting the right touches in there. She's just earned a lot of playing time with how well she's played in the last few games. Coffee got her feet kicked out. This is McDonald going against Coffee and tough play there, trying to get the ball, but goes to the player. And Coffee just gets those kind of fouls against her all season long. When you're a player of that caliber, you have to expect it. So well done from her to, to, to get back up and, and handle that kind of pressure. Coffee is, by definition, the resilient type. Left off the US U-20 World Cup roster. Really has come in lunch pail mentality since then. Trying to figure out what she can improve in her game. Somehow she's better this year than she was last. Well, you know a quality player when you don't win everything, nothing's given to you, and you make yourself better because of it. And that's what Coffee has done this year. The disappointments of, of not making the team and, and other issues off the field that she's had to deal with, but she's come back a better person, and that just speaks a lot of volume for, for how incredible she's been this year. Duke Ming run in off the right-hand side. Chance to serve. And Varela, it's now as far as Simmons. Good touch by. But the shot lofted well over. Head over to ESPNW, some stories you're going to want to read about. This week, the U.S. women's national team winning the CONCACAF crown over Canada. Julie Foudy's World Cup qualifying takeaways. Who prevails at the WTA finals? All that and more. Run ESPNW.com. I know you had your eyes on that CONCACAF World Cup qualifying tournament, the Women's CONCACAF Championship. And the United States was so good. It was it was fun to watch them play. And both them and Canada getting into the championship by winning the semifinals. And then Jamaica yeah. making it in as a third team for the first time for that program. And Panama will then play Argentina in a home-and-home -home series to see who gets that fourth and final spot to get into that World Cup. And that tournament started here in Cary, North Carolina, nearby, where the uh, Women's Soccer Championship is going to be the ACC this year. BC just trying to find their footing right now. It's been 25-plus minutes, 26 now, since they've last recorded a shot. Yeah, they, we talked to Allison Foley, and she talked about dropping back because of how high Sydney Simmons and Ellis Evans were sitting, so they dropped back a little bit, but they might want to rethink coming out in the second half, put a little pressure on that back line of Duke because it's been pretty easy in the latter part of this first half for them to control this game. I think step one is just to get out of the first half at 1-1 the way things have turned. Duke faithful with some calls to the referee. Coming up at halftime, we'll show you first half highlights and analysis. Vaughn, an excellent goal. And a pluck responding for Duke, ACC News and Notes. Look at the scoreboard around the league. All 14 are playing as we speak. And a look ahead in the ACC, the tournament right around the corner. We saw Allison Foley on the field pregame. Just goes, I can't believe it's only a week away until the playoffs. I can't really either. The season for college soccer goes so fast. And Tournament time is coming up for all the conferences and gearing up for that third part of the season. It goes non-conference, conference regular season, and then conference tournaments, and then the NCAA tournament. So it's it's all coming up real fast. We talk about the, the three buckets, the, the those segments of the season, and goodness, August feels like a blink ago. I'm just glad it's a lot colder. It was hot back then. Yeah, if it's me, I'm, I'm taking hot. I'm fine with that. Not me. 
I think we should change locations and you live in New York and I'm in Atlanta, so. <laughs> I'm just imagining a team like Miami having to go on the road in the first round at Syracuse or Boston College in the quarterfinal. Have fun with that. And you are far away from Coral Gables now. Good point. All right, less than 30 seconds left in this first half. Ella Stevens puts it in play. It's been all Duke for the last half hour. And now Coffee driving in. Will be able to hit Leipzig here. And we'll go to halftime 1 1. This has been a really well played opening 45 minutes. Yeah, it's been fun to watch. It's been pretty even for most of the game until the very end when Duke really put their stamp on it, their possession really wore Boston College out a bit, and we're going to see in the second half if Boston College can disrupt that a little bit more and whether or not Duke can handle that pressure. Senior day, Duke was never going to go down easy. Olivia Vaughn, an excellent goal. It's the freshman, Mackenzie Pluck, with the answer. Look around the ACC after this. College soccer on ESPNU in this presentation of the ACC on ESPN. It's one goal apiece between Duke and BC as players make their way back onto what's a well manicured pitch. No clouds overhead. Temperatures in the 50s in North Carolina as Duke and BC trying to figure out where this uh, top eight looks going into the final match day before the ACC quarterfinals next weekend. Duke getting a goal from well, maybe an unlikely source, Mackenzie Pluck fourth of the year, a freshman. As they respond they to BC's respond goal to in the 10th minute and count if you're BC, what do you do in, in the locker room to try and turn this around? Well, you saw in that stat sheet that Boston College had three shots. Well, they haven't had a shot in the last 29 minutes. They have to figure out a way to get coffee. That player right there on the ball, number 17, she has to get the ball. She has to connect more with Vaughn and other players out there like Bike, like Carrero and they just have to pressure a little bit more that defense from Duke and force them into some easy turnovers. If Duke pulls this out with a, a three-point performance, it'd be their fourth comeback win of the year, most in program history. It would put them in firm control of a home game in the quarterfinals. Number two seed, which could set up the long-awaited UNC Duke game that never happened this year. Not even an exhibition. It's a potential final in the ACC. Julian Jennings. Coffee, quiet late in the first half. Coffee tripped up edge of the area just outside. She gets in there, perhaps a combination play would set her up with Vaughn. This is a really dangerous spot for a free kick. Well, and Burns is very lucky not to get a yellow card because she absolutely missed that ball. And you can see the, how good Coffee is on the ball. It's so hard to get it away from her, but Burns is so late on that tackle. Surprised that the referee didn't reach for a card on that one. Coffee, 10 goals, 11 assists coming in. This has to be shooting territory. Coffee lines it up, drives, and Heinsohn makes the save. Tried to follow up, and it's over her, Rusima. Get up, get up! Away now, Duran. Turn now, long range shot is off the crossbar from Vaughn. BC didn't have a shot since the 16th minute. And two in real short order. Now McCoy trying to hold up and let Duke get forward. Out of the shadow of their own, own goal. And an excellent, excellent response from Boston College to start this second half. What a, and what a tremendous save from Heinsohn and goal to, to go through that traffic. Coffee, this is caught by Heinsohn. Heinsohn hadn't made a save yet in this game. Well, and this is, look how difficult that is. So many players in front of Heinsohn, and that ball was so well struck from Coffee. 
and Duke was unable to get any clearance. And then this shot almost gets in, but the crossbar saves Heinsen and Duke and keeps this game at one to one. You know, I hear great goal scorers talk about how great it is to hear the, the ball in the back of the net. I'm sure there is nothing that haunts your nightmares more than what we just heard off the post. Well, it haunts the, the post and seeing that save from Heinsen, you, you strike the ball so well and just miss out on opportunities. And you know goal scorers, they wait to hear the ball hit the back of the net to know when it goes in. But on those, you're just so frustrated because you hear those noises that are keeping it out of the back of the net. Guerrero backing toward the touchline. Little chalk on the back of her cleats. Back pass turned over by Jennings. McCoy, Stevens catch up to this. Rusima will throw. Tried a little left back, Rusima did, in preseason. And dealt with a couple of viruses that kept her out spring and then another in the summer. and. It's been a total shock. 16 in red for BC. Never could have expected such big returns out of the sophomore hailing from the Netherlands. Burns out of St. John's Country Day, Florida Player of the Year, Jacksonville area, decorated four-year Duke career. You mentioned it right at the outset, maybe not the player you expect to be in the center of a three-back. What's interesting, Robbie Church talked about how they can change formations so quickly. And it looked like they were in a three-back, but I think it's just Delaney Graham really getting high. And Pascal just kind of being a little bit lower, but they're really forcing Graham to get close to their front line, getting Rassiope to check back in and see if they can catch Boston College a little bit on their heels with that space in behind on the right and left side. If they see Graham here, there's a ton of room here up the line. And it was cut out by Rusima. She was even with Rassiopi along that Boston College back line. And they're playing a lot of players high because Boston College only has one up top. And she's been dropping so low, they can allow for those three center back types to, to really control the ball for them and push Graham forward and see how many numbers they can get into their attacking area. Rassiopi wants it out in front. Down by Duran and now Kayla Jennings. Usima played a bit midfield with Kayla Jennings out earlier in the year, missed three games due to injury. Real tight space now. Ball played ahead for Kayla McCoy, which is all the way down to Alexis Bryant. Bryant not a captain on this team and wasn't voted that way by her peers. Redshirt senior that had played 51 games his first, first few years. This year has grabbed the starting job, decided to be a leader anyways. Morning, Coach Allison Foley. When you need your goalkeeper to be a leader back there, you have to hear her voice. She gives you confidence with that, coming off her line well, getting those crosses, and it's been such a surprise, a pleasant surprise for Boston College to have Bryant doing such a good job for them in goal this year and, and giving that team that extra confidence. I mean, the first thing we heard from, from Duke's head coach was, wow, look at how good BC's offense is. And, you know, not that, that he was saying anything poor about their defense, but that's really what BC takes more pride in, their team defending, starting that goalkeeper and starting from the nine and, and working between the two. 
Well, Robbie Church did mention how much better Bryant yeah. had become from last year to this year, and he mentioned it after the, the offense, but you know, he he's even taken notice at, at what she's done in the offseason to make herself better, and she's a big difference for this Boston College team. Kind of player that in film session or even on the practice field or in games, almost like an assistant coach. Mailing this up the right hand line. Sailing over Vaughn. Look around for McDonald. Hey, fight team, fight team. Not on, not on, not on. Let's keep it, let's keep it. Duke, 12 goals scored in the first half of games this year, 21 in the second half of games. They have grown in to contests all year long. They trailed early. Game tying goal, about 10 minutes left in the first half. The turn from Jennings, she can't maintain. But that ball in from Taylor Mitchell, just missing. Duran doing a nice job of keeping it out, but that's the ball that Duke's looking for in behind on those outside flank spaces. There goes Kayla McCoy. For Carly Pascal and returns to Burns. Cassiope, good dragging run from Graham to stay on side. Mitchell, Rusima. Bodie comes on. Really impressive in that opening half. Rassiope who checks out. Yeah, Bodie played the whole, the whole first half. Didn't start in this second half, but they got her on quick. She's just been playing extremely well for the for Duke. Coach, can you back up, please? It's so interesting. It's been just about the same pattern of play the last three times down the field for Duke. They're playing around with their center backs. Then they're looking for, it was Rassiope before she came out. Bodie this time checking in, finding that runner, seeing if she can turn. Here Bodie absolutely gets crunched on that tackle. But Duke has really seen something that they liked in that first half, trying to exploit Boston College on their left side, Duke's right side, to see if they can get some checking in, and if they can't find the space, if they can lure the defender to follow her into that space, see if they can find someone in behind. It's Graham. Sima steps out in front of her, trying to usher this all the way out. And does. And that's the player that's going to be that decision for Duke. Does she go win with the player? Does she stay wide? Does she hold her line? And right now she's done an excellent job of making the right decisions because Duke hasn't been able to exploit it, even though it's obvious that's what they want to do. Saquon Barkley, Odell Beckham Jr. and the Giants in Atlanta taking on Julio Jones, Matt Ryan, and the Falcons. It's week seven of Monday Night Football, 8.15 Eastern, 5.15 Pacific, on ESPN and simulcast on ESPN2 in Spanish, available on the ESPN app so you can watch anywhere. Coverage begins Monday Night Countdown, 6 p.m. Eastern. Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. Varela 
Oh, wide open in the back. Diving header is steered aside. Jillian Jennings has not scored yet in her sophomore season or in her freshman season. Nearly found the go-ahead goal. And how is she this wide open? The coaches are complaining for offside. The referee did not call it based on the timing of her run and when the ball was played. It looks like she was fine. Her teammate should have told her to settle the ball down, take your time, look up. That's how much time she had in the box, but instead just misses with the header. Jennings, 44 goals at Montclair in New Jersey. Was a captain of that team, 12 letters across multiple sports. Nearly bagged a huge goal for BC. Should have bagged a goal because she was had plenty of time to look up, figure out where she was. Big opportunity missed. This is Bodie coming out of midfield and slips it through. McCoy crossing and cleared, aiming for Ella Stevens on the opposite post. The irony of the great goal scorer trying to feed the great assist maker. When it's the right decision from McCoy not to take the shot, the angle was taken up, but she did see Stevens on that far side. Could have even been offside based on where Stevens was standing, but Bodie was running through. Maybe she could have slipped her in. But good defense there from Boston College. Reroll. Fee out to Ufsima. Ufsima here. Taking Bodie for a ride. Swerving this right at Brooke Heinsen. Heinsen's had a really great year too. She just hasn't really been busy enough for us to talk about it. As Boston College did not take a shot. Nearly half an hour to close the opening half. And they've got all three shots so far, including two opening couple of minutes stemming off of a free kick inches outside the penalty area well that's when we talked about Heinsen because that was an excellent save from her strong wrists and to deal with a ball so well struck with so many bodies in front of her and then the uh, the crossbar saved her the second time reaching the byline this will ricochet the foot and out for a goal kick. ESPN basketball, a love story. Our unprecedented 20 hour film consisting more than uh, 60 rather interconnected short stories continues Tuesday, episodes five and six, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern. All episodes also streaming live on the ESPN app. Cal Whitehill, Mike Watts alongside. Big matchup in the ACC. Bodie, no handball. Referee waving it off. Stevens. Don't turn. over and fired across by Bodie, slapped down and saved by Bryant. How did she stop that? Again, poor clearances from Boston College allows for Duke to get another opportunity to play the ball into the box. But Bryant this time comes up with the massive save for Boston College, just unable to get a piece, of, the good enough piece of it was Stevens for Duke. But well done there from Bryant to, to stay strong, hold her line well, and, and deal with that little flick there from Stevens and keep this game at one to one. Both goalkeepers now with massive saves for their teams. Well, the fun's just beginning, too. Half an hour to play. Regulation, Bodie. Streaming out of midfield, Stevens. Mitchell deflects down, McCoy! Dragged it wide. 
Unbelievable, it fell right to one of the top goal scorers in the country. She can't bury it. Boston College is breathing a sigh of relief. Look at all the numbers, four in white. Tough for Boston College to deal with it. With the tackle, just lands at McCoy's feet and not able to get it on frame. And Boston College is very fortunate for that. Stevens replaced by Nabet. Nabet, a player with energy and effort that can plug into two or three positions. And a sophomore out of Los Angeles. Flag is up. Duke in an offside position there. That was a good idea, though, from Duke, and just barely missed that. Staying on side because that would have been dangerous because McCoy was flying down the middle of the field unmarked. Coffey wants it at her feet, makes a nice cutback. Jennings. Drusima. Coffey. Great vision. From the right hand channel. There's an appeal for a corner, and yeah, Heinsohn did touch that while it was still in play. BC team prides themselves on grit. It's the book they read over the summer. They're basing their success on it. They don't think they have more talent than everybody else. They feel like they need to show that resiliency. They led in this game. Coffee waits for it. Coffee with her left. Q shot. Nutmegged one player on the way through. Interestingly enough, Happy Church telling us that his team needs to play with a little more grit. I think at some point both coaches referred to wanting a little more cat on their team. I don't know if that's a compliment or not. I definitely was uh, one of those that wasn't that, wasn't going to let you get around me too easily. That's for sure. Uh, Ryan will grab this. Jillian Jennings will come out of midfield for BC. All square here with under 25 minutes to play. Duke taking over, and the head coach is 18th year. Robbie Church joins us. Coach, this feels like a great exhibition of ACC soccer yeah. right now. No question. No question. What a high-level game by two really good teams. Um, you know, we, we gave up one early, and then we fought our way back. We just got to stay patient. If we just stay patient and not serve long balls and, you know, get patient, play through the lines, play through midfield, build up, we've done really, really well and some good balls. We can a little bit more quality in the final third. The course should be okay. Well, it looks like you had a, a certain pattern of play at the beginning of this first half, especially on this right side. Was that something that you addressed yeah. in the locker room? It, yeah, it is. Again, it's something we saw at halftime and, you know, their formation, where they were moving some of their players and it uh, able, especially in the, the kind of end of the first half, we, we saw it and we were able to take a player, put her inside and then open up the outside lane. Um, you know, we came out of the locker room really slow, but I think we've kind of weathered that storm now. And if we just be patient, there we go, play right through the lines, we're going to be, be able to create some good opportunities. Coach, you want to join us in the booth? You, you got the commentary right down. <laughs> no, I'll stay right here. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. You know, right there, play it right through the line just like that. <laughs> we, we offered, like, you know, we can mic you up the whole game if you want. He didn't seem interested. <laughs> I'm not surprised. You never, you don't want a mic when you're on that sideline. Because you don't want to hear all the motivational tools. Right. Yeah. Yes. Well, we had a really nice time chatting with both these coaches over the course of the week. And, uh, well, examples of, of tenure here in the ACC, coaches that have been around the block. Duke had the staff of the year last year as they made their way to the College Cup. 
Well, it doesn't hurt when you have one of the best defenders ever in U.S. Women's National Team history, Carla Overback, that's been here for years. She does an excellent job with this defense, and you can see how sound they are. And there she is right there and getting up, talking to her team. And I've always heard, I've never had to play with her, but I always heard she was one of the best leaders that anyone has ever had. So it's nice to have someone like her on the, on the bench and, and teaching these young players how to play. Been here through a couple staffs and with a, a back line of, of players that maybe don't communicate enough, maybe aren't vocal enough. That's the kind of person who could teach you a few lessons. That was never something I, I never heard that about Carla Overback. <laughs> I heard that she was quite the drill sergeant back there and that's why she was one of the best. So she's definitely gonna be teaching them as, as these players get older and more experienced. <laughs> Exactly like Cat Whitehill. <laughs> I was a drill sergeant. I, I would yell. <laughs> but it's good. You, you got to get your team in shape. Corner here for Duke. They try and find a go-ahead goal. They'll get another run at this. He had a nice coaching debut last year. Yeah. I, I got to coach some high school. Made the playoffs for the first time in five years. Played around with a little coaching with the Breakers, too, when you were finishing out your playing career. And swinging ball for Duke. I didn't have as good of a record, unfortunately. Assistants don't get credit for, for losses, only wins. That's right, okay, I'll take that. Here comes BC charging forward. Bike is running down the middle. Tight, tight, tight. Jimmy, One. Jimmy, get some, get She's getting battered on her way wide. Time, time, time. To steer that back into the mixer. a lot of wins, by the way, over 26 years. Not a lot of losses, then. Robbie Church, over 200 wins at Duke in his 18th season. 2011 National Coach of the Year. The staff winning that honor of staff of the year last year. It's a program seeing a lot of success. This bouncing in, and Heinsohn will grab it. Well done there from Heinsohn, reading that ball so well because it did appear that Vaughn was going to be onside, but she just gets to the edge of her box and makes that e that save look a lot easier than it actually was. McCoy was in pursuit. It's out toward Pluck. Olivia Vaughn in the 10th minute, Pluck in the 33rd. Vaughn's ninth goal of the season. BC that early lead on the road. A win here could do wonders given the results elsewhere in the conference. Virginia was trailing 2 0 to Florida State at halftime. The chance to edge toward third. With one match left to play on Thursday before the conference tournament starts on four campus sites next weekend. It's away from Bike. If we ended things right now, BC 16 points, fourth place. They would host, they would host Louisville. Duke trying to find a win here. Stay in control of that number two seed. Well, that's the attacking third that Robbie Church was talking about when we, when we talked to him. It's Kayla McCoy gets in such a good position to get a good cross off and then just completely plays it out of bounds. It has to be better, especially if you're looking into that ACC tournament, you're looking into the NCAA tournament. It's the little things now. It's the, the minor things that will help you win and get to that next to the next game. And after this, it's a, it's a win or go home type situation, and, and that's where they have to really focus mentally. Langendurfer and Lockhead have come on. Rassiopi returned Sar there a moment ago. Ellis Stevens as well for the stretch run of regulation. Back in. Get back in, Riley. Five yards, Riley. Interesting to see if Riley Lockhead, the center forward, as it stands right now, a little more aggressive using what is termed as the best speed BC roster if they decide to go after the Blue Devils. 
And let's be honest, Pitt awaits in Massachusetts for BC next. If you get four points out of these two games, you're almost assured that there's some things that I think could still go on. I, I'm not that good at math. A lot of moving parts. But I, I think that would be a, a guaranteed home game for them in the ACC quarterfinal. I'll show you some scores from around the league while we're at it. Wake Forest, 2-0 up on Syracuse. When you're talking about Pittsburgh and Syracuse are really the only the teams that are, you know, at the, they're at the bottom of the table. They've struggled this year, and that's why Boston College is looking for that, that Pittsburgh game. They, you still have to stay focused. No game is easy here, but some big, big scores, lots of goals in the ACC today. Yeah, for Virginia Tech, that could be a potential devastating result. They can't find a point there. North Carolina can seal up the conference title as if there was all that much doubt. They're 22nd. They can finish off Miami. Pitt and Hughes, to your point, the only two teams that are out right now. Uh, seven games began together at 1 o'clock. It won't quite be like that on Thursday. A couple 6 o'clock starts. The rest at 7 Skyler. Skyler. on ACC at work extra. Let's go, Skyler. Kelly Mitchell, get in where you'll see the quarterfinals on the weekend. And you and I've got a Friday, Sunday semifinal, final couple of dates in uh, Cary, North Carolina, neutral site. Clipped along by Pascal. A chance to get numbers forward here. Race is on. Jennings, Coffee Flies to the right. And Coffey looking for 11th goal. That could have been just enormous for BC. Well, and Jennings makes the right decision. Look at all that space in front of her. She's looking to her right, looking to her left, making sure she sees where the defenders are setting up. Coffee with the perfect run, but just doesn't turn the hips nearly enough to challenge Heinsohn in goal, which is why she plays it to that near netting. Doesn't even get it on frame. What an opportunity lost there for Boston College. Coffee National Player of the Week honors has been remarkable all year. Five goals, 10 assists last year, already double digits in both categories. Top five in the nation in points scored. Nelson Foley put her up against any midfielder in the ACC, any midfielder in the country. Well, and she proves it when she touches the ball. She just hasn't gotten on the ball nearly enough today for Boston College to be as successful as they would want to be and as they have been this year. But she is so dangerous and lethal. Bodie, what a ball to the left-hand side. Deflected once, follow, just goes over the crossbar. Ella Stevens doing some pointing. That was Rassiope, who so often really throws her laces through the ball. This a little more finesse. That's an excellent ball in. Her second one kind of similar though when she changed, when she did a switch of the field, but here they're arguing. They're thinking that a Boston College defender could have gotten her hand on the ball as she was sliding down. And it looked like Varela did a good job of cutting down the angle. Hard to see with that shade exactly if she did get a touch on that, but Regardless, when Rassiope got that ball back, she had some players in the box. Maybe look to find those players rather than uh, putting a shot in at a tough angle. Ball from McCoy drops down and Bryant is on it. It's hard to think of McCoy as underrated. She and Rassiope have gotten a lot of attacking accolades this year. Rassiope was probably underrated right until she became a viral sensation last week against Clemson. Well, they've had a good connection this year, and that's been a key for Duke. They just haven't connected much today, and that's a, a, tri a tribute to the, the defense of Boston College. They've been very sound and disciplined in their line. They're not getting too stretched, and it's been tough for Duke to really break them down. I got it. I got it. 
Varela. Transferred in from Monroe College, an All-American junior college level. Let's take a look at how we got to this point. We begin in the 10th minute of play. Kat, this was entirely against the run of play, the goal by Olivia Vaughn. Yeah, it was, but what an excellent ball in from Coffey. But then Vaughn just takes the right touch, beats the defender and goalkeeper with the goal, and then Pluck finding that near slot area. And Bryant is frustrated with herself because as a goalkeeper, you never want to allow a goal in like that. But Pluck just come in the game and immediately gave Duke a spark. Bike being bodied into the touchline. Off balance challenge comes up short. Up, up, Injured player down in the center circle. It's Chelsea Burns. I'm not really sure what happened. She went down and looked like Jenna Bike was looking around saying, well, what just happened there? So it's interesting to see that she just easily went down and was slow to get up. It's on the field earlier. It did feel just a little bit slick under the surface. Of course, I'm, I'm not wearing studs, so this has slipped ahead too far for McCoy. Well, neither are you. I wasn't slipping too bad. It was, uh, it was all right. Uh. <laughs> it's a great field. Fantastic, isn't it? And it takes oh, a lot of uh, a lot of action over the course of the year. Lacrosse, and women's soccer, and uh, well, all the accolades of those teams strewn along the fence line. Final fours and national championships. Well, even this year they're adding. The University of North Carolina is actually playing the, some of their men's home games here because the stadium isn't ready yet. So even more soccer being played this fall here. And UNC Wilmington played a bit here as well with the hurricane. Despite all of that, this uh, Bermuda surface stadium named back in 1999. True. By Duran. Bryant lobs it away. Here comes Lockhead. Okay, got by Graham, Coffey, last to touch it. And looks like it might have just glanced off Coffey to give Duke the throw in, and Coffey wasn't very happy with the decision from the ref. Length. They saw something in the in the first half that they tried to implement in the second half, but now they've forced it too much. They need to change the point quicker. Where they've been the most successful is when the ball has come from the right side to the left side on a quick switch, and there's a lot of space open for them to, to run and dribble and pass through. Modi, Stevens, able to get this ball ahead. McCoy is nearing the goal line, and Bryant bobbled it. Set right back up the pile line and now for a throw. And close 
about uh, being offside there was Rassiopi, but the ref, assistant referee didn't call it. A bit of a miscommunication there from Duran and Bryant. Here's a throw into Duke. Rassiopi ran out of room. But it is a corner for Duke. Well, Stevens will move over from Gatorade National Player of the Year, Grayson in Georgia. Sixth in the country last year in assists. Puts this up near the goal line. Bryant swatting at it. Ball comes free. Cleared away from the line. There's no handball. Well, there was an appeal. Austin College trying to get out on the break. They've created a two on one. Bike. Slipping ahead, catching up to this. Leipzig goes down, and it is a corner. She touched, and the Duke able to get back there. And good work from Bike, but an opportunity for Duke that was missed just by, based on very good defending. No handball, it doesn't appear. It could have even been a call against Rassiopi on Bryant, but they were able to clear the ball, and. Bike got a 2v1 and a well defended transition moment for Duke and Delaney Graham to slide over and get the corner kick for Boston College instead of a shot on goal. Stop! Coffee goes short. Come on. Gets it back. The return comes up short. And now Delaney Graham. Graham trying to turn on the Jets. Morello came out briefly has returned, Convery comes off, dumped over the top, McCoy, McCoy onto her left! McCoy puts Duke in front, her 36th career goal! And so much credit right now has to be given to Delaney Graham, not only did she help save her team, from an easy transition from Boston College, but now on the other end, she takes it upon herself to try and out dribble three Boston College players, wasn't able to do it, but the poor clearance from Varelli gives the ball right back and an excellent ball over the top, finding that quick change of point. And Caleb McCoy getting a little ricochet off of the defender, which is why that beat Bryant, but this is why you can't live without McCoy. She's that type of player, has a scoring knack where she just takes a little cut onto her left foot, hits the defender, and you see so many Boston College players just going to the ground deflated because that was just the last couple minutes were back and forth on both ends. But Duke getting the better of it all. McCoy's 36th goal, her eighth so far this year in the ACC. Fourth all time in Duke goal scoring. BC trying to avoid a program record fourth straight loss at the hands of Duke. They've never won here. They've only drawn once this, the ninth meeting. And this senior class on senior day looking for their 65th win, building on a class record. All that if BC can't answer in the last five minutes. And this struck from distance, bouncing ball. Jennings well, for BC is trying to coax the referee into a, a corner here. I think that was a fair call. Well, there's McCoy now. That's uh, some pretty high level praise to be among that group. Well, Duke has had some, uh, some excellent goal scorers and excellent players. And McCoy, when we talked to Coach Robbie Church, he, is, he just kept saying she's a player we can't live without. When you have a player that can come in and you can almost be guaranteed a goal from her or at least an assist, it's, it's been amazing for her in her career. Ten goals this year. Last year at 14, tied for the most on the team with Imani Dorsey, who joined Sky Blue FC midseason in the NWSL and turned in a Rookie of the Year performance playing with one of the other big nominees out of South Carolina, Savannah McCaskill. 
4.30 to play. Boston College was trying to avoid a zero-point road swing through North Carolina. They began with UNC, lost 1-0, conceded in the first 10 minutes, came here after being shut out for the first time all year in Chapel Hill by scoring in Durham 10 minutes in. Sports Center tonight, 11 p.m. Eastern on ESPN with Bucci and Kenny Main. We'll have reactions and analysis. Bengals Chiefs, Boomers back with Week 7 highlights and a conversation with Saquon Barkley. Sports Center, 11 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. <laughs> Caitlin cost, cost me was put in for, by Robbie Church because number six in the back, an excellent defender, helps them maintain a lead. She'll come in late in the game, especially if they're up, to make sure they can keep this two to one lead on Boston College. Long ball, Vaughn. Vaughn keep this, Mitchell puts it away. for Vaughn, who scored for BC first. Mitchell steps in. Coffee. Coming up next on ESPNU, it's Kansas and Baylor. Lori Lindsay and Tyler Terrence on the call of that one. Number 13, Baylor in Waco trying to continue through the Big 12. And join us Tuesday, men's soccer, number five UNC, number 14 Duke, 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU. Big men's soccer match up there. McCoy will run this down. And it's been another shot drought for Boston College, about 41 minutes now since their last shot they don't have much time to get another one in but they need to get one in the next two minutes just to, to keep themselves in this game that last shot was the ball off the crossbar before that one of the saves of the match the only save made by brooke heinson less than two minutes out of halftime coffee's free kick minutes to go separating Duke from their 12th win in the last 14 they've lost just one in the last 15 coming in and it was a much better job from Boston College in the second half they responded well from being dominated at the end of the first half but really, Duke deserves this win. They had better chances. They outpossessed Boston College. They, they did do a nice job of team defending. Besides the one quick transition moment, uh, not allowing for an off offensive attack like Boston College to go through so, so many shot droughts has just been tremendous for them. But you can just see how good the ACC is because these are two of the best, and they, they proved it today. McCoy's 14th game winning goal if it stands. Another feather in the seniors cap on senior day in Durham. She'll run this to the corner and try and get as much time off the clock as possible. Throw BC, this their last chance and well, McCoy signs, McCoy fans all about Simmons, McCoy, Simmons again, creating, tries to shoot. Now 20 seconds for BC. Try and get up the field. Rassiope should be able to carry this out. Ten, eight, seven, six, 
turned over there. Simmons wide, and that's it. Duke holds on that much closer to the number two seed. Another win for this vaunted senior class. And another win for Kayla McCoy, another game winner. Fourth comeback win tied previously for the record for Duke. Now it's all there. It's their 65th win for the senior class. Final score, Duke 2, BC 1. Up next, Kansas and Baylor. And next soccer match, men's soccer, North Carolina and Duke, Tuesday on ESPNU. For producer Todd Goulis, director Jim Roller, our entire ESPN team, and Cat Whitehill, Mike Watts, saying so long from Durham.